Happy Monday, friends. It's Mark Claire Monday. What better way to start your week than with a dose of Mark Claire and a great conversation? Hopefully, I aim to bring you great conversations every single week. I want you to start your week right. I want you to start your day right, like I do every single I mean it literally every single day. I start my day with Fox and Sons coffee. I don't have it in front of me right now. I'm recording this later at night. See, my thing is, I love coffee, I love caffeine. And if I drink too much after like 2 or 3 p.m., watch out. I'm not sleeping. But that's why I load up in the morning. So every single morning, I brew up with my French press an amazing cup of the Den Blend Dark from Stephen Fox of Fox and Sons Comp. Co- blah, blah, blah. Fox and Sons Coffee. No editing, folks. We just roll. We live in the moment. We live in the moment together and we move on. Fox and Sons Coffee, foxandsons.com. Steven started this business not just because he loves coffee, um, but also to teach his sons about entrepreneurship. And I think that's just an amazing thing. So many amazing things going on and amazing that he supports my show, my very first actual sponsor. So all I ask, if you enjoy this content, please do help our sponsors. Um, it, It keeps the cycle of love going. You know, they help me. You like me. So you help them so they're happy with me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't drink coffee, well, maybe this one isn't for you. But if you you do drink coffee, I urge you to at least one time head over to Fox & Sons, F-O-X-N-S-O-N-S, foxandsons.com. Just treat yourself to one bag using my discount code, MCS, Mark Claire Show. Use discount code MCS for 15% off your order try a bag. You will not be disappointed. In fact, you'll probably be like me and sign up for a subscription. Now I get one of these puppies delivered to my door, a big two pound bag every single month. And it's awesome. So check out Fox and Sons, foxandsons.com. Load up on your coffee and get ready because we got a nice discussion today with a man who, if you follow me in Lions of Liberty, you heard me have several conversations with some of them when he was known as Vin Armani, some of them when he was known by Cyprian. It doesn't matter what you call him. It's a great conversation. Enjoy my talk with Cyprian. Welcome back, friends, to the Mark Claire Show. With me today, he is a longtime software developer, which is going to be very relevant to the conversation we're going to have today. Um, you may know him from various other mediums. You might know him from Gigolos on Showtime back in the day. You might know him from the Liberty crypto space. Who knows? You may know him as Vin Armani. You might know him as Cyprian. I know him as both. Cyprian, welcome to my show. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, first time on the new show. I'm excited. Indeed. Indeed, I am as well. And yeah, we've. You can probably search, you know, Lions of Liberty, Vin Armani, and or Cyprian, and find I think maybe three or four different shows from mm-hmm. back in the day. And a lot of the stuff we talk about here will will become relevant. So if anyone wants to do a deep dive, uh, that that can be done. Um, but. For anybody that hasn't caught up on all those all those past conversations, might not be familiar with you. Maybe you can just give sort of a, a little cliff notes about yourself. Maybe kind of honing in on um, some, mostly what will make this conversation relevant that we're going to talk about. Sort of the, the video series you've been doing on the attention economy. So maybe you can focus on you know some of your background that's relevant to that because you know on the surface the software stuff is is obviously very relevant. But as mm-hmm. we'll get into, there's a spiritual element to this as well. So you can mm-hmm. take things wherever you find it the most appropriate. Okay, what things are relevant? So I think, um, so my formal education is in philosophy uh, and then my professional training. So I've been a software developer and entrepreneur in the tech space for 20, it's been 20 years now, I'm getting old. Uh, and um, at the same time as sort of the software stuff came about and, and how that came about, my career has really been a crossing of technology and media so like even in my when did i start when did i do my first radio show i guess it was probably 20. Uh, and then i got involved in radio internet radio i was a dj from my teens through even you know when my daughter was born i was still doing clubs and stuff in vegas um and i also as you said happened to be on a reality show it was a the interesting thing about that was it was a long-running reality show that was a highly produced character-driven reality show on Showtime called Gigolos. And part of what I took advantage of in that time, six seasons, right, that I was on this show, was I became really close with the production staff and the editors. And I learned Mm. sort of the art of reality TV, which is really the ultimate form of propaganda. Um, And it should be no surprise. You know, people would be like, oh, reality TV? But it's like, no, the craft of reality TV. Not the last press we had 
was a reality TV star and producer. And I think, uh, and I would argue that a lot of the reason why people thought that he would make a good president was because they had totally confused the character that he was playing, that you're fired. That character sitting at the boardroom table that had been built by reality TV, th that was actually what was in people's minds as who this man was, mm -hmm. right? And why he would make a good leader. Because outside of that, did anybody really know him as a leader per se? You know, uh, not to mention a man who was also involved in professional wrestling for a while, right? So, and that's another one. Is appropriately so there's a lot of crossover between professional wrestling and uh you know the type of reality tv that i was doing which is on the line of the character driven line it's line of like the kardashians and things like that right uh, the way that it was sort of sort of uh brought together and then uh and when that was over you know i've spent the rest of my time really in in the liberty sphere i geared my i knew once the whole reality tv thing was done that I knew I was going back to software. I was already a senior developer at the time that that little opportunity came along. And so I've spent the rest of my time in software and particularly in cryptocurrency, which really aligns with my, my values. And so I, uh, I live in Saipan currently, the island of Saipan uh, in the Northern Marianas Islands. And I, I do development and I teach and I speak and I write, I've written several books and um, and yeah, that's me. But most of it's about most of it is technology, economics, and the philosophy around that. And and of course the name. I am uh, I am a convert to Orthodox Christianity, and so uh, and so that's a big part of my life as well. It feel but that aspect of me really does feel like like um, there's very logical. There's a through line and a logical logical progression, and it's like everything in my my life. Uh, was lining up for me to be orthodox. I was mm. definitely being driven towards that. And so it, it really does feel like a, a, not a completion, but certainly a fulfillment and like a level up on where I was going already, uh, for sure. Well, that was a pretty succinct, like three minute summary of, of stuff that we've covered in like probably six to seven hours of podcast. So if you want the extended version, I'll link, I'll link to our past conversations in the show notes, but a uh, job well done on the summary there, Vin. So you, uh, Vin, Ciprian, I, I still, I still, I still just change. It's my fine. Mind either one's, no, I, either one's no, I know it's fine. It's just, I can't even decide which, which one I prefer. So, <laughs> but uh, to talk about the series you've been doing, um, I think you started this maybe six or seven weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. It's called the attention economy. So let's just start with the basics. Well, maybe even before the basics. First, what what were some things that you've been seeing out there um, as of late that sort of drew this? I, I assume this is something you've had in your mind for a while, the, mm -hmm. these ideas and this concept. So is there anything that was happening, particularly as of late, that you said, OK, now is the time for me to take these thoughts and put them to, to video, I guess you would say? Yeah, a couple of years. And I've been speaking with people uh, in software other software developers people involved in philosophy people who sort of get this this thing but but especially people who have a technical background um i've been speaking about this with them privately for for years now um and when i say this what the attention economy is about is primarily it's it's a an attempt to explain what the ramifications of what we are seeing really in short, the AI situation um, and to sort of draw a line from like, where did we start? What does this thing come out of? What is it a part of? Uh, and to answer your question of, of what I saw. And it's crazy that since I started to now, if you look at how the public conversation about the particular type of AI that I'm talking about, even in those six to seven weeks, it's been like this. It's been something happened. Right. So yeah, I was clearly I, seeing I something like this, that was happening. I, I feel like this, your series, I don't know if it was right before, if it wasn't right before, mm -hmm. it was almost the exact same time that we started seeing this AI art pop up everywhere mm -hmm. and chat mm -hmm. GPT. I mean, it was almost, it was almost like you planned it <laughs> marketing wise. Well, the AI art had been around, but really it was, and, and I had been talking about the chat GPT stuff, but really what I saw was uh, something that looked like a quantum leap in in the content generation AIs. So specifically what I'm talking about is I'm talking about chat GPT, which people are using. And also right now, because most people don't have access to the most advanced, which is made by OpenAI, the same company that makes chat GPT, the most advanced image generation is called Dolly or Dolly 2 is the version now. The public doesn't really have access to that. But Midjourney, 
is the one that we're seeing a lot of. There are a couple of other ones, but Mid Journey is by far the most popular. And I had watched the growth of Mid Journey. I had watched people, what they're doing is they're training Mid Journey. I had watched them start to create things. And I think what, what really spurred me to it was for the first time I saw people who were non-technical using this and creating these things. And then it was the quality, how the quality had increased, how markedly the quality had increased, and also what it was that these individuals were training it to do. There was a, a week where amongst my circle of friends, a number of people, friends and associates, I would say, and also students and private groups that I'm in, I was seeing uh, people using the mid mid journey in particular to basically make these heroic kind of comic book um, images of themselves. So depicting themselves in this very sort of comic booky, artistic, heroic way, basically as superheroes. And it really indicated to me, I, like, it seemed to me that men, especially that I knew, that's all they were doing. And then my wife came to me with a series of pictures and it was basically but it was a glamorous version of her. And she said, oh, which one of these do you like the best, right? And my wife is- You're the like, least no, it's in the house person. now. <laughs> my wife is the least technical person out there. Mm -hmm. So really what I was seeing, and as a, de as a developer, this was viscerally like, I was viscerally aware of this, was I was seeing a leap in accessibility. Mm. And the issue with these particular technologies is they need a, there's a feedback loop. OK, there's a feedback loop with them. It's like. We have to interact with them in order to train them. But once they get a critical mass of people training them, they become better. And when they become better, more people are interested in training them if it suits their ego. So when you and, say tra and so we training, had a, yes, go ahead. Just can you kind of clarify what what training them really means, mm -hmm. what that looks like? Is it is it writing code differently? Is it no. giving it input so that if when someone down the road asks for Spider-Man, you get a better Spider-Man? Is, is it more like that? Uh, the second one, yes, but people don't know that that's what they're doing. So so let's walk through this at like a, we'll, we'll do this at kind of like a layman's level here, right? And And I'll, I'll be imprecise here. So there will definitely be people in the comments or whatever who are like, well, he described that wrong, like technical people. I'm going to be like, we're not going to do the technical discussion here because there's plenty of the technical discussions. What's important is that people get a sense for this. OK, so I don't need to be technically precise in order to give you a sense of what the ramifications are of this thing. Um, these technologies, let me give you an example of uh, a technology that we have all used that is uh, that is one of these. So, uh, captcha. Let's start there. Okay, everybody knows the captcha, right? It's got the the image or all of the images, right? And it says, pick the squares that have a traffic light, pick the squares that have a bridge, right? To verify that. What does it say? Verify that you are human, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what it yeah. says, right? Verify that you are a human. How do you verify that you are a human? I'm going to show you an image. This image is taken with a digital camera, right? Really what it's taken with is it's taken with Google Street View, okay? So it's taken with a camera mounted onto a car. Now, prove to me that you're human. Show me which one is a street light. Show me which one is a mountain. Which one is a bridge? Pick the one that has a bus. Pick the one that has a bicycle. What people don't realize you're doing is you are training. They, you, Google is using that to train their autonomous cars. Uh. You ever notice that it's all street view? It's yeah. all street view. Now that I think it, I never all, thought about it before, but yeah, it's, it's always all stuff from on the roads. street. Yeah. It's all from roads, right? Uh, Google has fantastic um, speech to text, right? Where you're like, now this is futuristic. If we even go back to like, I don't know, even the 2010s, okay? Or, no, they start because they started before that. But even like 2005, 2006, right? You had like speech to text was pretty bad. Like they had like, I think there was a company Dragon Simply Speaking or something like that. And if you, if people who ever use that would remember that you would get the software, you would put on the headphones 
And then before you could use the software, you would actually have to train it to your voice. So it would show, it would give you something and you would have to read it so that it could be trained as to how you say the, a, all of this so that it could start to match it as you went. And it was not that good. Okay. They got better and better. Then Google decided that they were going to do that. Well, how did they train their AI? Well, what Google did was Google released something called Goog 411. I don't know if people remember this. Google 411. So you would dial 1 800 Goog 411, G O O G 411. And it was automated. Remember that, yeah. <laughs> it, it was automated. And you, and you would say, I used it a lot because it was great. Like, and this is, this is early 2000s, right? And it's like you would just say what you wanted and it would go, blah, you'd hear blah, 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 in the background as it was like figuring that out. And then it would tell you. So what Goog 411 did, and they released it globally, right, on all these different languages, is you trained speech to speech to text. It was a thing to train. Basically, to, what they figured out is we can offer a service where people will have a demand to use it and will offer the service for free. But really, the reason why it's free is because we don't, instead of paying somebody to sit there and read and train this AI and train them in every language and all of that, we'll just create a service whereby a whole bunch of real people will actually do the training. And we'll hide it behind this service. Goog 411, CAPTCHA. You'll notice CAPTCHA is Google. Okay, that's Google. Now, the same sort of, so this brings us forward, okay? Chat GPT is free, right? And now they're like, okay, come on here and, and just chat with it, chat for fun. Some interesting things that you can screenshot. Tell it to do something interesting. And you communicate back and forth and tell it when it's wrong as well. So you're actually like, no, nah, you kind of got that wrong. No, go back. And then it goes, oh, and then try again. And it'll go, oh, I'm okay. What are you? You're teaching it. Prove that you're a human. It's you're a human teaching this thing, teaching it, teaching it. And what can it do? People talk about all the things that it can do, right? Oh, it can write a write a rap, rap lyrics in the style of Kanye West. It can write a tweet in the style of Donald Trump. It can do this. It can, and most of it is like in a particular style. That's very important. It can write in a particular style. Now they've gotten it to pass medical uh, regent exams. I think a law, some law, the bar. They've gotten it to pass that. Several different of these graduate level tests, postgraduate professional tests. It passed. It passed them in the last couple of weeks. That's just the chat one, right? So then, what's the second thing that they're doing? So that's to create the content, the written content. Now, we already have great text-to-speech. We've had that for a long time. Very natural text-to-speech. As a matter of fact, you see a lot of YouTube creators using it. right? You'll see this kind of documentary YouTube content, and it'll be spoken by a text-to-speech. Yeah. So somebody had just written the text, and it'll be spoken by text-to-speech. So chat GPT can be talking, and... You don't, you're, right now it's typing and coming back, but the talking back and forth, that's child's play because that's actually all already built into our devices themselves. We don't even need anything additional to get to that, right? And that's why Microsoft is in, I think that, I think they're making a billion, I think it's a billion dollar investment right now in open AI for chat GPT to be part of Bing. So that Bing can just basically do this, right? Which makes it something completely different than a search engine. Right, completely different. It's like a, gu so a guru or, or something that you just talk to. But the so we've got that part. Okay, interesting. But you see, you got to see all these things together. So then the other thing is mid journey. So they make that free as well. You notice all these things are free. And one of the things I say in the attention economy, and this is just a known thing in the in the world of the web, that's been said for a long time. I didn't come up with this. If it's free, you're the product. Mm. If it's free, you are the product, right? So, and that's the attention economy, is that really what's being sold is your attention. Your attention is the commodity. You are the product, your eyeballs, your ears. And mid-journey and these other image generation, in what's crazy is since I started to now, the quality of what mid-journey just by itself is able to create is, is blowing my mind. In six weeks, how much it's grown. It's gone from, like I say, these comic booky, not photorealistic, 
They look kind of wild, kind of dreamlike. Um, it started out very dreamlike. You know, you go back and you look probably about a year ago. That was when I think the first people started sort of melding these things along with lyrics. They were giving it song lyrics and then it would create like pictures. Some people have seen the music videos that people have created like this. Um, it was very dreamlike and like not realistic at all. And then at about the time I'm talking about it, got into this like comic book phase where it was kind of like, wow, that's cool. It actually looks like a person, but it was drawn. It looked painted. And now within the last few days, and I, I put this one on my Twitter, I basically, you know, quote tweeted the thread that this guy made. And I said, this is how the world ends. Um, and basically what he had done on Mid Journey was he had just asked it to create like hot e-girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one that's been going around. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you pixel what they call pixel peep, if you like go in, you can see, oh yeah, this is AI created. But at a glance, like it's it's fat material. You know what I mean? And it, and I said, oh, well, this is how the world ends. This is how the world ends right here. Because the idea is like, the, and this is what the attention economy is about, right? And so it's like, I guess I timed it right to be talking about the fact that what this really is, is it's a trap. It's a trap for your attention. That's why these things are being built. To, to, to make you voluntarily, like the experiment of the rat that kept getting stimulated and would hit the button until it starved or whatever. I don't know how apocryphal that all is, but there's something, there's, there's some study where it was close to that, right? They would hit the thing, it would trigger the, the pleasure center, and they would just keep hitting it until they expired. They wouldn't eat. They wouldn't do anything. And I think we saw this. I don't know if this still goes on, but th there was like this epidemic back in the day in the first sort of iteration of like uh, MMORPGs, like World of Warcraft, and I think some other multiplayer online games in like Asian internet cafes where guys were going in there and they just would never come out and some of them starved to death and some of them just like died of other things and whatever and they would just play the game and that's with a game that still feels like a game <laughs> you know you it doesn't necessarily and feel like you've and left it's the not game. tailored it's not tailored exactly for you mm -hmm. now maybe with these particular guys it got lucky <clears throat> and it hit with them in particular right because for somebody it's going to be tailored perfectly for them and those are the people who become addicted to it that game other people are like ah, i could take it or leave it but when you combine this with suggestion algorithms, because it's all one thing in the attention economy, right? Everybody's feed is customized to them. Everybody's YouTube is customized to them. It's of what you've watched and what you've done. And it's anticipating. It's anticipating what it is that you want to see next. Right now, unfortunately, it has to pull from the best thing created by a human. But when it can create exactly what it knows you want next on the fly, unless you have a spirit, unless you have a spiritual background and foundation, you have no defenses against that. So you're saying instead of humans like you and I who are on YouTube creating content, at some point um, you won't even need us there because all of these technologies combined will uh, will create better versions of us, I guess. Not better, but better, more catered to specific individuals, and it will just create these videos or whatever content it may be and shoot it directly, catered to directly to sp each specific person. Well, the thing is, it won't be podcasts. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, I mean, this yeah, is what, yeah. like, it, it will be... <laughs> if only it was so innocent to be to be. Podcasts. No, it will be much more visceral. Because, see, human attention, this is actually a hard one. Capturing human attention for an hour, never mind an hour and a half, uh, at scale is really difficult. And I, I will guarantee you that um, the people listening to this, half of them, as I say this right now, do not have their, at this point in the show, do not have their eyes on whatever device it is uh, and are not watching us intently. Right. Uh, they're doing something else. They're listening in the background. That's part of the joy of podcasts, mm -hmm. of the medium, is that you don't have to have your full attention on it. But what I can guarantee you with every single one of those people is that there is something that I could put on their screen right now. There is something mm -hmm. that they would be completely susceptible to watch totally, right? And what's there's 
the terrible part about that is it isn't necessarily something pleasurable. Huh. It could just as well be something that drives their anxiety. It could just as well be something that makes them angry. Well, just like it could just as well be the, something that makes them hungry with the Twitter algorithms or what have you. I mean, I, I think we all have to like slap ourselves in the face sometime and be like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm actually like on here, like yipping and yapping with someone that I don't even know who's not even a human to me all because I just, because it's sending me what will get that reaction from me. Well, and Elon Musk basically like openly admitted to this in a tweet recently and like had LOL at the bottom and a little laughing face where he was like, you know, if you get angry and you engage with somebody, the algorithm will just feed you more. Even if you love to hate somebody, the algorithm is going to feed you more of that LOL laughing face. That was like last week as we record this, that he said that. And I noticed something. And this is maybe I can notice this because I, I, I follow only 22 people on Twitter, right? I've got, I've got like a, a one to a thousand follow to followers ratio, right? I try to keep that on all of my platforms. And it's, it's, I only follow 22 people. And now they have the little, when you go and you, you look at um, your feed, they have the two columns. One is for you, which is the algorithm. And one is following, which just shows you in order people that uh, engagements from people you're following. There was a period, and I know that they were doing this as a test. Elon Musk is doing a lot of things. Like, this is a shady dude, man. Like, he's fully bought in on this whole thing. But I know that they were doing a test where they would just, they flipped it to the for you automatically. Even if you had it on following in your settings, they were flipping it to for you. I noticed that this was happening because something happened where I was going to Twitter and I was going through my feed and I was getting pissed off. And I said, what? What is happening? And uh, this is only because I, ha I have adopted an Orthodox Christian life that I, that I am constantly checking myself on these things. Before in my life, I wouldn't have checked myself, but I was like, wait a minute. You're way more pissed off at this Twitter feed right now than you've been in a long time. Because that's because, because your followers. own your own feed has been sort of curated to not have that really anything that's going to set you off in that way. But they flipped. I, I, I feel like this happened, too. I mean, I, I guess it did. But I remember when the last couple of weeks that something happened to me where I was like, I don't follow these people. What is this? That's then, what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. They were moving it around to test the engagement. That's mm -hmm. why Elon even even brought it up. Right. They're moving it to test. They're like, OK, what does this person's engagement look like? OK, we, this person's just on following. Let's flip them over to for you and see. Let's just automatically flip them over and see how their behavior changes. Flip it over to for you. Boom, all this engagement. And it's all engagement that's negative. All of my, I was not liking any of those things. I was commenting. I was quote tweeting. I was doing, and then I was like, whoa. Like you say, I was like, I don't follow these people. It eventually came to me to like, I don't follow these people. And the second that I went back to my following, and just went up. I was like, there's nothing here for the last day that triggers me at all. I go to the for you, the first three things. Hmm. And so this is, you know, one of the things that I had been saying for a year and tweeting is like I'd been saying over and over and I did videos about it. I said, their degeneracy is your trap. This is what I'm talking about. Their degeneracy is your trap. This is what I mean. Because the goal here is to capture your attention. And it's to not, it's not to make you happy, there. it's to get no. your attention, which could be by yes. making you happy, but it's probably not as effective. And the thing is, the demons don't care, right? So, it, you know, in Orthodox tradition, uh, this is true, and this is just Christian tradition, but I mean, Orthodox tradition is very, very heavily focused around the idea of the passions, right? And lust is a passion, and gluttony is a passion. And acedia, which is like sloth or laziness, they call it the noontime demon, which is just like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. That's a passion, right? And those are all kind of like pleasurable. I'm going to go play video games right now instead of doing, instead of, you know, hanging out with my kids. That's like acedia, right? I'm going to go do something pleasurable. I'm going to scroll. That's a passion. I'm going to go eat some, I'm going to go eat till I'm pizza till I'm sick, right? I'm going to go have casual sex. Those are all ostensibly pleasurable things those are passions but so is anger avarice which is greed right D despair those are all negative but see the, they all lead to hell the demons don't care 
And as a matter of fact, there's a great sort of idea in orthodoxy. This is part of my catechism. My, my spiritual father, Father Turbo Qualls, brought this up, but it's been brought up many times and I've seen examples of it. It's like, and it's a trap for people. And I, it's a big trap. And it's the degeneracy is your trap. The de Their degeneracy is your trap. Trap. It's also the trap of, uh, what is it? Reject modernity, embrace masculinity, mm, right? Yeah, and those little meme that. videos that have those, big trap. What is it? What's the trap? It's like this. So I'm a guy. Oh, and this is what this is one that'll hit home because it's a message that you've had and it's a back and forth that we've had. So maybe I can, outside of 240 characters, I can maybe expand on it. It's it's also the idea of it's the trap of no fat, right? So it's like, yeah, lust, passion, sin. The demons want you to have lust. So you're like, okay, no fap though. No fap. No porn. I'm gonna no more porn, none of that. And then you're like, a month goes by. Good luck not yeah. feeling lust after that month. <laughs> well, let's say you don't. Let's say you don't. And you're like, ah, no fap. And then you go online and you're like, guys, I made it a month. Look at this. No fap. Look at this. Blah, 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 blah. No more porn. Pride. Mm -hmm. Pride just got gotcha. you. Look at me. I did it. Pride. Even if you don't go out and say it to anybody else, internally, the fact that you're like, oh, I'm so proud of myself. Look what I did. I'm great. Pride. And pride is the absolute worst. The demons would prefer you to, to have pride than lust. They'd actually rather that you had the pride than you had the lust. So that's the trap. And it's, it's, it's pride worse. Day, um, it just, oh, it's the, it's the absolute worst. Is all worse, the fathers, all the saints say worse. Is it worse because to me, it's like on the others, like if I feel lust or something, or uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm gluttonous and eat a bunch of pizza or something like that, I'm going to feel shitty afterwards, you know? Whereas with pride, you it's the one where you like, you do feel good afterwards. You feel so good. You feel like, you know, above it all. Well, it's the sin responsible for Satan's fall. It's the ultimate sin. Right? So it is, it, it is out of pride that Satan fell. And, it, and because it's the opposite of humility. And humility is the greatest virtue. The greatest virtue. And the, the virtue the, that is the most representative of Christ. But it's like you can never go wrong. Like humility is the ultimate. And it's it's the one it's it's humility and discernment is what we as Orthodox Christians pray pray that we would would have. It's the greatest gift. It's the greatest gift, humility, right? And if you think about it, like even outside of a spiritual context, just look at twenty twenty, right? Look at what happens when you don't have the humility to say that you might have been wrong. Look at Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Let's look at it outside of even a spiritual context. Let's just look at like these clips of Neil deGrasse Tyson unable to or or um, what's 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 a uh, numbskull atheist. Uh, uh, oh, Sam Harris, Sam Harris, Sam Harris. <laughs> Though those key words were, were enough for me. <laughs> look at him and the, the stuff that he said. Right. And it's all just an it's pride that is not allowing them to have humility and say they were wrong. And the thing is, if you can't have humility and say that you were wrong. If you, if you can't have that and you have pride, it prevents you from ever repenting, which means it pre prevents you from ever learning, growing, gaining wisdom. So it's really, it's like antichrist and it's the worship of self. And, and it is like, and again, not even at a spiritual level, all you got to do is see that exchange between Neil deGrasse Tyson and, um, and Bill Maher to see how toxic pride is. What was that one? I don't think I don't think I saw that one. Uh, it's just uh, there were several of these. There was also one with him with the that Ben David guy, that big big podcaster, uh, Grifter. Oh yeah, and uh, he was Patrick Ben David. Yeah, Patrick yeah. Ben David. Yeah, yeah. When, as soon as I said Grifter, you knew. Um, <laughs> uh, it only what, takes one or two keywords with these guys. Exa exactly, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, they it, in both cases it was just like scientists were wrong, like they were wrong, and and this was wrong. And he's like, well, no, there was data and you had the best thing at the time. And like, we go off of the evidence and this and that. And it was just like, dude, you were wrong. Like you and Sam Harris, the same way. Right. And, um, 
I can't remember anybody's name, which is good actually. Dilbert, Dilbert guy. Oh, Scott your, Adams. Your buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah Scott Adams. Buddy, yeah. Same thing. They won. The anti vaxxers won. They were on the winner side, right? Winner side, they won. And it's like, no, dude, not about winning. Just say you were wrong. This wasn't, it's not about, well, I lost. Like it was some sort of a, 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 a tennis match or something, like right, a boxing right. boxing match. Well, there's the where, score. I mean, there it is. Here's so. the score. You won. You got the better score. You're in the better position. We'll, we'll shake hands and just play another game, I guess. And you don't need exactly. to learn Exactly. As opposed to being like, no, I was actually wrong. And people who listened to me, I, I actually could have gotten hurt. Like I actually was driving people in a direction where they, what, that was the more dangerous direction. Whether they actually ended up hurt, and who knows, with long-term, right? Whether they ended up hurt or not, like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I was wrong. Now, there have been several people who have come out and said that. But the people who are not saying that, the reason why they're not saying that is pride. Do you think it can go the... I, I mean, I know it can um, and does, but, you know, the other side, the, the people that are more on what you might call like our side of that whole thing, you might say that we can get so um, full of ourselves for being so right the whole time that we can suffer from that that same issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I do. I, mean, I, know, I know for a fact I do. That's why I said it. So, Dude, I do, too. I do, too. And I think that people could go back. They could go back through my own tweets and be like, man, you suffer from this. And it's like, absolutely, I do. I'm repenting of this. <laughs> right. Hopefully I'm better now than I've been, but I'm still nowhere near where I need to be. Right. And so it's like I can the only reason that I can see it in other people is because I see it so much in myself. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's tie. Let's let's focus on the pride aspect of this because I think that mm -hmm. one really does tie into this entire conversation about the attention economy. Uh, it's about getting attention, gaining attention. Who can get the most attention? Who has the most influence? Who has the most clout? And I, mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous enough where we already sort of have been for a little while, where it's humans doing all this. But as you were sort of getting into, we're getting to the point where the humans are going to be out of the equation. Well, we'll still be the product, but they'll be out of the content creation equation. Mm -hmm. So maybe dig into that a little bit more. So here's the, here's the dystopia as I've always seen it. And I've talked about this for years. Um, and I think that it's just, it seems so out there to people. It, you know, talking about this five years ago, which is, what I always, which is what I always saw, it seemed very much out there to people. But I, I'll give you, so, th so this is probably four years ago or so. Um, I kind of wrote down this idea for a short story. And I think that this, the plot of this, or maybe a movie, that this will give you an idea of where this all heads to. Okay. So well, it's, you, it's can kinda, just, you can just plug that idea into chat GPT now and get the whole, whole script. And get the, <laughs> they can write the whole script for me. Right. Exactly. So here's the synopsis of the idea. It's basically, it's a, um, it's a fantasy kind of uh, not, it's, it's sci-fi, but it appears to be a fantasy uh, story or movie, right? So we basically open into this world that is a fantasy kind of medieval style world, right? It's like Game of Thrones style. There's dragons and elves and fairies and all kind of cool things. And it's uh, the story is about a, a king. So a, a prince who has just become a king. And in this, this world, these people, they live for, they're basically eternal. They live forever. Um, thousands upon thousands. Nobody knows how long they live for, but they basically live forever. And thousands of years are going on. And after a thousand years, they're still, and they stay youthful. After a thousand years, the king, the old king decides he's going to go off and the prince becomes the king. And they tell the prince, they say, okay, so here's the deal with, the ki with being king. And he's sort of bred for this. And they say, you are going to be the king. Now in this world, nobody gets sick. Nobody dies. Things are pleasurable. There are bad guys, but every time they go off, like they always win, you know, his, his army and everything, they always win. They suffer no, no deaths or whatever. Um, they, they always destroy the enemy and they're hailed as heroes and everybody parties and everything like that. They say, so here's, here's what it is. Every thousand years, you as the king, we take you down into this chamber, right? You're going to sit in this special, this like special chair that we have that's gilded in this this chamber you're gonna we're gonna give you a potion you're gonna fall asleep and when you wake up you're gonna be in the realm of the gods 
And your job as king, because the gods keep us safe and they do all of this, your job as king is that you have to spend one day out of every thousand years serving the gods. And when you wake up, you will be helped by and you will be in a world with all of the other kings and queens of other worlds. And you'll meet them and whatever, and then you'll come back and you'll do another thousand years and we'll be here. But this is our offering to the gods. And so they do this and wake up and he wakes up and okay, he's here and he's in these white robes or whatever. And here are these individuals who are the gods and he serves them, right? And it, it's kind of a, the world is different than his. It's not like a fantasy world. This is when it goes into like a sci-fi type of situation. And there's all these kind of devices and things that he sees. And then he goes back to sleep. And when he wakes up, he wakes up in the chair and he does another thousand years of this wonderful kingdom. And then he goes back to sleep and he wakes up and he does another day, right? And this goes on and on and on. Except what's really happening is it's basically like Neuralink. So it's slavery. Every day he's just waking up. He's mm -hmm. just a slave. Every day he's just waking up and he's serving these gods. And every night when he goes to sleep, the machine is able, and by the way, Elon Musk has already said Neuralink can do this. It's distorting time and making him think that it's been a thousand years. So and, the, and the simulation is the thousand years of him ruling as the king. That's but, right. Yeah. Have and you seen the movie, you, uh, it was a pretty recent film on, on um, I think it was on HBO. It was, um, it's called Don't Worry Darling. It's a, it's a very similar. I've plot. heard of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, is it? It's, it's right. Yeah, not not the, not as much of the time stuff, but okay. But but and the God stuff, but the rest is very similar. Okay, so well then, look, it's not surprising to me that as these things start to come about, that people will get this idea, right? That it would that this would percolate through. Now, some people are going to see that as a dystopia. I think people like Elon Musk see that as a utopia mm -hmm. because they are the gods. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> that it's like. Oh, well, these people would be happy to be slaves. And this is the true dystopia. The true dystopia is that you get to be a social media star. You get to be a social media star with 5 million followers and, and people who love you and, uh, you know, all of these people who reach out to you. And, hey, you even, you even interview guests on your show and you even have uh you know chats chats with people who are interested in you and all of these things of course it's all through zoom except you haven't interacted with a single human being you're not followed by a single human being every single person gets to be their own social media star and that's what will keep people and the thing is like right now we're very close to that we're very, very close. Is this sort of like merging everything you're talking about with like sort of a, a metaverse type headset and suddenly you're you're in there doesn't for... Even, doesn't even have to be. Could be Twitter, dude. Hmm. Could be Instagram. You mean we, we're, we, we're not even aware that we're in a, in a game that's simulating our popularity? Correct. Correct. They're just numbers in a database. Your followers are... Your follower number is just numbers in a database. So we could be, and this could be happening right now. No, it is, it, is happening. it is happening right now. That's the whole point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is not the future. This is like, it. basically what I'm saying is right now, all we're doing is we're iterating. We're just iterating. And what's happening is that humans are becoming less of a part of this, just as what happens in any business, right? In any business, in any industry, it's not like the attention economy is different than the automotive industry. It used to be human beings that worked on the assembly line, producing the product. Now it's machines, robots that work on the assembly line for cars that build the cars. Well, you are the product. Your attention is the product. It used to be human beings that captured your attention, increasing then the algorithm. And then the machine took over that part of choosing for you and recommending for you. It started out as humans. Even Google, right? When Google started with the search engine, at the time, they just copied Yahoo's code. But at the time, Yahoo was using human beings to sort search results. Wow. You would send in your website, and then the human beings would actually input it into, the, into where it should be in the search category. Human data entry. Right? So Google just automated that process. And as a result, great efficiencies. And as a result, great profits. 
the every industry goes to automating the simple things but people just don't realize that there's an attention economy they're just not aware you are the product that your eyeballs your ears you know there was a little there was a little um spat that i had a couple of years ago with a prominent uh libertarian where i had said in a podcast it may have been yours i oh, said in a podcast that this about. is that this individual was a predator. All right. It wasn't on my podcast, but it wasn't there was, on a, follow, there was a follow up on mine, though. Yeah, I know what you're talking and about. And I had said this individual, he, I said, he's not a predator like a sexual predator. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't want anything from you like that. I said he what I said was he wants your eyeballs and your ears. And people could not understand that. Now, for me, I actually have a patent from 2007 for inserting ads into podcasts. I've been thinking about this for 15 years and building the solutions for it, right? So maybe I took some things for granted at that time. But I think people can start to see this better now, which is why I'm, which is why I'm sharing it, right? Now, it's too late to stop it. That's what people got to understand. It's not going to stop. You can't stop it, and you also can't avoid being presented with it. And the reason you can't avoid being presented with it is because the only, you could only go Kaczynski. Because even if you're not going to be involved with it, the people that you're going to interact with are going to be involved with it. And so if you're, you if you're going to choose not to be involved in it, you're going to make yourself an outcast in almost every way to the point that you're probably not even going to be able to function with the most of the rest mm -hmm. of society. And the most important part of this, and this is why 2020 to now was like, I, I tweeted the other day that it was basically the tutorial level. For what's coming and it was a blessing because it was something that you didn't want something that had actual negative consequences for you your mental physical and emotional health right and so you denying it or saying no i don't want it you could say it based on those grounds the thing that's coming is exactly what you want what's coming is exactly what you want at this moment and it's just like here you go not just something good, but like exactly what you want. And it's not just like, you know, somebody hands you candy and you're not hungry. It's like, if you're hungry, it'll hand you candy. If you're horny, it'll hand you porn. Right? If you're angry, it'll hand you exactly something to be even more angry about about that thing. If you're prideful, it'll show you a mirror and tell you how great you are. Where, wherever you're at at that moment, it'll give it to you. And so the real, so the answer is you have to say no. How do you, this is the greatest challenge that any human beings have ever faced in their life? Like it's 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 the highest challenge because it's the the most visceral exposure to the demonic that any human being outside of like saints who have literally had demons standing next to them have ever experienced, and every human being is about to experience it. That, that's like I feel like that that deserved a moment of silence. <laughs> um, all right, I, I, for a second, I'm gonna play perhaps perhaps literally devil's advocate. Devil's advocate. What about what about people that are that hear this may take the same information, maybe they don't have the same spiritual outlook on it, perhaps, and they might say, okay, well, yeah. Uh, everything you're saying it tracks in terms of the technology. Um, mm -hmm. But this is just what's been happening. As you pointed out, this is what's been happening in all of human history. Uh, we've become more efficient, whatever the the needed products of the day, we, we get more efficient ways to produce them. We satisfy the needs, the wants of other human beings. We're doing that more efficiently. People are fed more than ever. Um, people mm -hmm. are kept housed more than ever. People have water, they have all their needs. So what's the big deal if, people are getting content that they want and it's done in an efficient manner. And if the, if it's making this attention economy churn, so to speak, mm -hmm. why is, why is this such a terrible thing? Why resist it? Yeah, exactly. And, I and mean, in the material view, maybe you can't really argue that if that's the only place you're looking. I mean, it is the, and this is one of the things that I try to bring up with the, um, with the idea of what it is that we're dealing with. And it's why you have to look, beyond so what you what you just said i mean if you could like 
you know, if you could put a uh, somehow allow a cow to speak, a chicken on a chicken farm to speak, right? A pig in a pig pig in a pig farm. I mean, we have like fables about these things, right? Where they're like, you know, the the wild cow comes up to the thing, the wild bull or the wild pig, and is like the feral pig, and is like, come on, come on, get off the farm. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Why would I want to get off the farm? It's, I got everything I need here. I'm fed. I've got a roof over my head. I've got all this. And the feral pig is like, the farmer eats pigs. The farmer eats pigs. He's going to eat you. You know when people just vanish every once in a while and they're gone? Like the farmer eats them. And the pig goes, oh, that's no that's just whatever they just go sometimes like just sometimes people go and anyway dude you're not making sense if the farmer ate pigs why would he go through all of this trouble he's like look last year i got sick i was super sick and the farmer got a doctor to come and give me medicine so that i got better what you say he's gonna eat me that doesn't even make any sense He's not going to hurt me. If he wanted to hurt me, why would he be getting, he's doing the opposite of hurting me. This is, feral- this is literally, uh, sorry to interrupt the story, but I yeah. like, I've heard this same thing only take out, but why would Elon Musk ex- expose Anthony Fauci if he, if he's not on our side or why, why would this person in this position of power do this thing? That's obviously good for us. If they didn't have our best interest at heart. Aha. Uh-huh. And here's the reason why. And it's especially important when you talk about super intelligent AI, right? Is that it's like, so that that pig is going to be a Christmas ham. Okay? Pig's going to be a Christmas ham. So the farmer is saving that pig to eat it for Christmas. Now, you can understand the motivations of a super intelligent AI. Like, why is all this being built? To the same degree that a pig can understand the concept of Christmas dinner. That's the difference in intelligence that we're talking about. That's the difference. And we can't even wrap our minds around what being served as dinner might be, I guess. I guess you could say. No, because because we would have to look at it through the lens of our own wants, needs, and desires. But this thing doesn't have a body. It doesn't have our all of the things that make us human that are that are part of the animal world. It doesn't have a need to to breathe, to eat, to sleep, for sex, for uh, uh, interaction with others that are outside of itself. It might not even be able to recognize that there is something outside of itself, right? And we can't even bring our minds around it. So, like, it's in the same way that, and this is why I say this thing is a predator. It's a predator. Like this has gone beyond making money. This started out with like businesses wanting to be profitable. Like the Elon Musk thing, you know, he took over Twitter. Before he took over Twitter in April last year, I tweeted and I said, Elon Musk take over of Twitter is all about training AI. I said, it's all about training AI. That's what's going on. This long before, right? And then Elon comes out I didn't even know at the time. I didn't even know. Elon Musk was a founder of the open AI, of OpenAI, the company that created mm-hmm. ChatGPT. I didn't even know. It's not something anybody had ever talked about. And then Elon even tweeted himself and was like, yeah, you know, it turns out that OpenAI and ChatGPT, that they had access to all of the Twitter data, to every tweet ever, and to train the AI. I was unaware of this, and you know now I don't think they're doing it anymore. Oh, you're saying before he took it over, it, that was happening. But before uh, he took Twitter to over, him. before he took Twitter over, that he just took Twitter over, and he just found out <laughs> that the AI company that he founded had was using all of the Twitter data as as the basis to train its AI, Chat GPT. But he just found that he was totally unaware until he took over Twitter. And then you start to realize, like, well, why would he want to pay $5 billion for Twitter? And then start go looking at his tweets of what he says Twitter is. He says it's a neural network. He says this himself. He said it in the last several months. 
It's a giant brain. It's a neural network. So people are like, oh, yeah, Elon friend. Elon friend. Look at Elon. He's feeding us. He's putting a roof over our head. If he wanted to hurt us, he wouldn't let us have free speech. And it's like, wait a, wait a minute. No, but free speech is better for training the AI. When he says Twitter is going to be the most true platform, what does he mean? Even Jack Dorsey responded to that tweet when Elon said that. Twitter will be the most true. The most true. Jack Dorsey was like, true according to what? Like, true by what metric? No response. And what it is, is it's the most true to fallen humanity. The most true to what truly drives us. You really use the phrase fallen humanity? Or no, you're using, you're using that. Okay, okay. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he didn't respond. Okay, I got you. I'm telling you what yeah. it is, right? Because your attention is going to be held by the passions. Like, you're, you're, the demons are all about getting your attention. All about it. That's their whole. That's their whole thing. That's all that they want to do. Get your attention, because when your attention is is on something else and it's on the world, your attention is far away from salvation. No chance for salvation. And we don't even have to go spiritual for that. There's a great. There's this great quote. I'm forgetting what author said this, but there was some author who said, "My house is never so clean as when I have a novel to write." We've all experienced this. You got some work that needs to be done. You know you need to do it, right? And you're like, ah, you know, maybe I should just uh, clean my house. Ah, uh, maybe the bathroom needs some cleaning. Oh, these dishes definitely need washing. You know what? I need to replace that doorknob. Oh, maybe a little uh, paint uh, over here to just, oh, yeah, there's something definitely, right? That's exactly what we, and, and it's like, oh, but it's a virtuous thing. No, but it's a thing that needed to be done. The distraction. Hmm. Attention. So you could see that it's like already our attention is the... our Because attention is worship. There is no difference. Worship is just focused attention. We Worship is what we call the devotion of attention to a single thing with all of our consciousness that is worship you take all of your consciousness all of your attention you put it on one thing and that is worship you've said a couple of times um something to the to the effect of you know it, it's too late like there's no going back this this mm -hmm. is this is here and it's going to keep sort of evolving uh the algorithms will continue to evolve so is this is this how is this related to like this concept that we've been hearing about for like 20 years this concept of, of the singularity um of of the kind of that that point of no return is that is this kind of what you're describing essentially uh well you know people around me who who i trust one in particular amari sachet for years has said to me privately and now he sa says it more publicly he said the singularity already passed now he spent four years at facebook as a senior developer okay he said the same, and, he, and he's the lead developer of Bitcoin ABC. He's the person who created Bitcoin Cash. So incredibly brilliant guy, great software developer. And he said, no, the singularity's already passed. We're just iterating now. It's already happened. We're just iterating. And, and I think that that's very true. And also, just like the idea of the pig understanding Christmas, we would never know. We would never be, because this thing, because it's a predator, it's it's a demon. It, like, there's not going to be an announcement like, hey, everybody, Singularity is here. Now I'm new, I'm your new overlord, overlord. I'm your new robot overlord. We're not going to get that moment, I guess. Well, that would be communicating to the pig in a way that the pig could understand that you were going to slaughter it for Christmas dinner. One, there's no reason to do it. <laughs> there's just no reason. You wouldn't even think, the farmer wouldn't even think to be like, how can I communicate to this pig <laughs> that, I, that I'm going to kill it for Christmas dinner? Because it's really important that this pig knows. Or even the farmer to think, 
I need to sit down with this pig and tell it all about farmers <laughs> so that it can really understand, you know, what I'm thinking. First off, it's, it's impossible. Like there's, it's impossible to, to condescend, right? The predator doesn't condescend to the prey. We don't condescend to our cattle. We wouldn't try to communicate with, with the corn, with the corn plant. I don't try to communicate with this banana plant, even though I'm taking care of it so that it can produce bananas that I like to eat. The, there's no way for me to communicate with the banana plant what I want from it. But it, but it is manipulating us to our spiritual detriment. Now, if you have no spiritual basis, if you don't believe that there is more to this, that there is a good and a bad, right? If you don't believe that, if you just believe there are natural processes, the news that I have for you is you are just going to be, that's it, you're done. Like your children will be living in a pod. If you even have, if you even have them, that's it, right? That's the end. You're that's humanity's over, and that's we've been told that's what happens, right? Like this is the end, this is the end, and so it's it's the it's the simplest, as in least complex, but also the most difficult thing that people will ever do, is when you are presented with exactly what you want. To say no. And I guess that is, uh, I want to try to wrap this up on sort of a, <laughs> somewhat of a positive uh, a note, I guess, as much as we can with uh, this sort of um, dystopian picture that we've painted today here. But, um, and I, I know I think in, in to some extent, the answer is going to be to, you know, to find that other thing, I, I guess. And, um, but Okay, well, what, 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 let's just say there's someone that isn't really down that path necessarily, but not they're close-minded to it necessarily, but they do, from the technological standpoint and from the problematic standpoint, see all the issues and sort of agree with with the problem you're presenting here. So what what are some like some steps people can take? What are, are there ways to mitigate this? Are there ways to to remain aware enough that we just don't, you know, that we don't find ourselves just, you know... Like you said, in the pod makes it seem like we're aware we're in the pod. So maybe it maybe in the pod is, is giving it too much credit. Maybe the, maybe it's not even that great. I mean, so the truth of this, the truth of this is you're going to have to have an experience and a relationship with Christ. Like, that's just the truth. Now, a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, what? I like, thought we were talking about not, software. Like, <laughs> that's not a that's not a like, that's not a solution. What's this religious nutcase saying? Like. That doesn't even make any sense. And it's like, well, if I heard that three or four years ago, I'd, you're, I mean, I'd be thinking exactly what you're saying. The, the, so it's hard to say more about it, but it's like, that is the truth. That is the truth of the matter. That is actually what Christ represents. That's actually what the cross represents. Like the willingness to go to the cross because you recognize that, like, there is a battle that is going on. And because you recognize that the, the, those who hate you will destroy you, just are just as happy to destroy you through pleasure as through pain. That, the, that what's coming is seduction, not coercion. And that what you will be presented again is exactly what you want now. Because anybody who said, what? A relationship with Christ? Anything like that? If it's just beyond the pale for you, I'm telling you right now, everything that you want, everything that you imagine yourself to be, that you would want to be, you're going to be able to be it. Maybe one reason, perhaps one reason why I have been inoculated to this to a certain degree is because I basically got it. You got it in, in, in the regular way, sort of. You might like, say. I got it for real. I had fame, fortune, and my particular fame was that I was the most, like, the, the most sexually attractive and heroic. This is what I'm presented on in syndication. Like, person possible. So any woman that I wanted as well. And women paying me, beautiful women drop dead gorgeous women paying me to date them 
right? So it's like Andrew Tate is like a a a a, a, a mere glimmer, like a like a weak imitation of what I had. And the other thing is, I didn't go I didn't go to jail in Romania. Right? I did this out in the open and was celebrated for it, not hated. Right? I had it all. But I know what it is to be destroyed by that at the same time. Because looking back, it was a terrible, I felt poisoned inside out, physically, spiritually, the whole thing. I was walking around in a poison fog. And so the thing is, I know if you get what you want, this is what people got to understand. Whatever it is that you think that you want, Now, if you were to get it, you will regret it. All the material things that you want, you'll regret it. I think that's a a fine way to wrap up. Let's let's put it that way. And uh, we might dig into a little bit more uh, of this stuff in the smoke-filled room uh, where we hop over in just a second. Uh, But uh, before I wrap up, I want to let you, you know, do do all the plug-in. You got to plug. Of course, the Attention Economy series can be found on your YouTube channel. And you're also uh, a co-host along with Father Turbo Qualls, um, who was recently on this show of a podcast as well, The Royal Pass. So feel free to plug away on that. Anything else you got going on? You're still doing uh, some mystery schools and that sort of thing? Yeah, I've I've got my software stuff and uh, the businesses that I have right now are ramped up so high that probably there won't be mystery schools. We'll see. Probably there won't be for at least a few months. Maybe I'll do them a couple times a year. Um, yeah, t- Twitter, you can find me. The Attention Economy series. It's a playlist now on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, probably also on my Instagram. You can go and find it. I think, Mark, what I might end up doing is I'm just going to, if this is on YouTube. I'm just going to add this to the end of the the playlist because I think this pretty much sums it up. Sure, uh, that so, works for me. And that saves and that saves it gives a little more views here and it saves me from uh from having to to rehash this from having to rehash this. But I think I think it's good. You know, I want it to be over. There's sometimes you know there's just things you got to get out. And like, that's why that's what has spurred me to write my books. That's why I'll do the interviews that I do. That's why I do the videos that I do. It's like, if I'm doing them, it's just because, you know, this thing, I I need to explain this to people so that when these things happen, that I don't have to feel like I didn't do my part. Right. Because I at times feel incredibly guilty if I hold these things back. So this is what I saw. People could take it or, or not, but, um, yeah, I would say it's, I would say, look, if you're not ready to seek Christ, I'd say just seek truth, seek wisdom, seek wisdom, and you will find Christ if you're really going there. Don't even worry about Christ; just seek with seek the truth of this whole thing, right? And and uh, and go at that. And that's I think for people that's the best you could do. All right, Cyprian. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Really do appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Cyprian and, and it kept going my friends in the smoke filled room segment if you want to check it out just one time now i'll tell you subscribe star i finally got someone on subscribe star subscribe star does allow a seven week seven seven week that'd be amazing a seven day free trial i think rockfin might have one too do yourself a favor if you've been on the fence should i support the mark claire show financially should i not i don't know i like him but it's eight dollars and I, if you're on the fence just treat yourself once and go listen to the smoke filled room. Go listen to the extended edition of my conversation with Cyprian. This one was wild. Uh, despite the fact that I've interviewed him several times, this kind of stuff, I never really knew about at all. Um, I knew he had done some ayahuasca ceremonies, but he, his description of what was going on in his life when he was very well known, when he was into the occult, when he was getting into ayahuasca, this stuff is wild and it does in fact tie back into his journey um to becoming an orthodox christian but it's it's one of the wildest paths to get there you could ever imagine and vin really gets into some some detail on on a lot of the stuff and a lot of the stuff he went into and how that search for the truth um eventually led him away from that occult stuff and it's just it was just a fascinating conversation one that really blew my mind so uh, again if you're gonna try it once Try subscribe, sir. I'm not sure if I have a free trial on Patreon. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Anyway, there are ways to get free trials. So I encourage you to use one of them to check out this extended edition. And you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to get hooked because I have incredible conversations, especially when we dive into the smoke-filled room with each and every one of my guests. Patreon, Rockfin, Subscribestar. I don't care how you get there. I just 
Hope that you get there and hope that you enjoy yourself. Hope that you get value out of it. Of course, it's not just great bonus content you can get as a premium subscriber to the Mark Claire Show. At higher levels, you can access more of my services. As I get more people at those higher levels, we'll do special happy hours for certain levels. Um, you can also get free services of mine. I guess it's not really free if you're paying, but at our highest level, 77 a month, you get a free consultation with me every month, or I will mention your product or service or website on each episode of the show every month. So part of what I'm trying to do is help people to navigate this reality, help people to build themselves up, um, have side income and that sort of thing. And that is something that I give consultations with, especially in relation to podcasts, but any really kind of side com- income generation uh, in general, um, I can help you out with. So you can do that. You can get different tiers. The tiers are only available on Patreon, but uh, Subscribestar. Actually, no, I think they're on Subscribestar as well. Uh, Patreon or Subscribestar uh, for the full tiers. Rockfin, you just get the content, um, but you get content from myself and every other creator on Rockfin. So my and people ask me, which one should I choose? What platform? How should I support you? I don't care. I really don't. Maybe there's little differences here and there on fees and how I get paid. At the end of the day, I want to cast a wide net. I let you support me whatever way uh, works best for you. So I put them all out there. Head over to markclair.com. That's M-A-R-C-C-L-A-I-R.com for all your links. Until next time, my friends, good afternoon, good evening, good night.